We have a fireside chat coming up for you guys on 2023 TradeFi and DeFi. Alex Cohen, Managing Editor at Cointelegraph, and Adam Levy, Co-Founder at BackitFi, who is also a PhD, will review the successes and failures of the traditional financial system and the emerging decentralized financial system, covering the biggest wins and the most embarrassing moments of the year so far. Please welcome Alex and Adam. Hello. Yeah, that was a lot of energy uh, from you <laughs> just, just now. We'll try and match that. So, um, yes, I'm uh, managing editor of Cointelegraph. We do news, you know, another cool content podcast, for example. Not just crypto now. We're expanding into everything that is the future of money. So do check us out. And, um, you know, I wanted to pass on to you now to introduce yourself. Like the topic that we're talking about is kind of in between, you know, it's positioning us to talk about like in, in between the two worlds, like crypto and traditional. And you kind of position kind of right there as well. So like in your own words, like, can you tell us what you do? Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, I am a Adam, and I'm a co-founder at Back Finance. And what we're doing is tokenizing, you know, major securities. You can think of major equities like Tesla or Amazon or Apple and uh, treasury bonds, things like that. And we're doing it out of Switzerland. So you can imagine that's a lot, hell lot of, of regulatory stuff just to make, you know, securities work in DeFi and things like that. That's actually very, very complicated. And, you know, we just had a conversation about regulatory in Israel, which is <laughs> impossible. So BACT is working out of Switzerland, uh, mostly because of this reason, Switzerland has a very good uh, regulation. And, and we see this clash now in the world between TradeFi and DeFi. Uh, and we see some companies being able to, in a way, you know, bridge that uh, or mine the gap, as, as you can say, uh, with uh, Circle probably being the first really doing that. Uh, so back is trying to follow that path. Okay, maybe off topic slightly, but what, what are your thoughts on Israel? Because yeah, your company, as you just said, like, you are positioned in Switzerland. So like, as a first question, which I didn't plan to ask, but like, you know, since you mentioned it, why did you make the move? Like, what prompted you to? And especially Switzerland, it's kind of makes sense, but like, why not Israel? So Israel is really, really good in deep tech. Uh, there are a lot of great people here that knows, you know, very smart people here. Uh, and also a lot of, you know, entrepreneurs. So people here really like to build and create. So that's very good and it works for in our favor. But on the other hand, you know, it's like the regulatory stuff is really, you know, you have the banks and you have the regulators that are really trying to avoid everything and really, you know, just trying to make sure nothing bad happens in, on their watch. And you can't really be last and also be like a place of, of, uh, of innovation. It doesn't work together, okay? And if you compare that, for example, to Switzerland, you know, they've been, with, for example, with securitization, they've been, uh, with the DLT Act, being the first in the world, like, by far. Uh, you see now uh, the rest of Europe following them with Mika. Mm -hmm. uh, the US actually on that is actually very much behind, but... Uh, <laughs> But uh, I think Israel has taken a very wrong turn with respect to, you know, helping and innovation. So what would you, what would make you come back or think about coming back to Israel, theoretically? Like, is there one thing that... So this, these pain? things are, you know, sometimes they're irreversible, uh, especially in a highly regulatory, uh, you know, business. Uh, but, you know, I would be very happy if there would be like a similar legislation in Israel to the DLT Act that would allow innovation from here, to be honest. All right, so like talking about the subject, I um, wanted to ask you, like in the context of the global kind of economic situation, like, you know, the interest rates are going up, you know, inflation is going up, like can sort of DeFi really come in at this point in time and maybe help out? Uh, could be one of the solutions. Like uh, I'm talking about DeFi in general. Like uh, you know, I would, for example, uh, I think consider even Bitcoin part of DeFi in a way. Uh, like, is it the right time for it to come in uh, with the rescue somehow? Because it was basically created to do that. So to be honest, my answer would be no at this point. Um, 
I think you know inflation is 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 a big problem, and and but we're fixing it. You know, so interest rates are up, uh, which is a good thing. Well, you know, it's it's not good now. We're suffering, but uh, uh, the alternative is much worse. You know, we've been bad. Like we've been printing money and taking in, like interest rate into zero, uh, which is crazy uh, for too long. Uh, and now with with interest rate, we are able to correct that uh, somehow. And you saw, uh, I'm guessing everyone following like US CPI, right? Uh, Consumer Product Index uh, that that is now down to five or 4.9, uh, which was at, which topped at around nine. Um, so it is working, you know, and we're all suffering because of that. Same as, you know, a, a, like a person taking too many loans and now he has to work hard and repay them. You know, that's, it is what it is. And, and Bitcoin, in a way, and, and crypto, in the long term, I think, are providing a different path. But at the moment, we already took a path, okay? We already printed a lot of money. And someone is going to have to pay for that. You know, there's no free lunch, as Milton Friedman used to say. Well, yeah, I think the price of bread in Israel rose like five to twenty percent. I think last week or something silly like that. But yeah, we're definitely paying for it. Like, uh, I'm definitely paying for it. Um, but like, so like, do you mean that the current like traditional finance system, I guess, is working? Uh, because like, you know. The premise of crypto is that we're here to kind of make it better, or at least make a change, like make disrupt it. Like right now, we're just you know just passengers on this kind of train of, hey, let's print a ton of money, and now let's all suffer, right? It's I don't know, I don't think it's working for me, but like we're not there in terms of adoption. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, well, you know, we're not. You can just check out the numbers, right? <laughs> it's like the 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 trade fire economy is is in the many trillions, and and and. And crypto is not so. So it's uh, obviously we're not there yet, but I think we're offering an alternative. Uh, so we cannot. Uh, and when you're saying it's working, I wouldn't say it's working because you know we got to this situation, right? We we printed a lot of money again. Okay, it's not the first time. It's not the second time. You know, since uh, I don't know 31 and 71, since we really ditched, you know, the 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 gold. Uh, so I, I think it's obvious that we're doing something wrong. And it keeps on growing. We have to like raise the debt ceiling again and again and again, and the numbers are just growing. And you know, th this is really ruining lives. So I think crypto, in a way, is offering an alternative. But you know, it's it's a way for an individual to exit. Okay, as Andreas used to say. Okay, it it allows you to exit, but. Uh, most people did not exit yet, so uh, in this case, uh, we we still have to pay what we what we've borrowed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. And the adoption numbers are still quite tiny. If you think about it, like just the sheer capitalization of the crypto market is just a speck. But like, what would you say are the ways that you know we can get it up there? Because right now it's still quite difficult for me to explain it to my friends, my parents even more. So, and like, what would you say are kind of for you the easier steps for us to take um, in order to, well, start offering that option, alternative option right now to a wider group of people? Because even now, like, you know, I'm talking to my friends, they say, yeah, things, you know, are rising in price. It's getting harder to do this. It's getting hard to do that. The salaries are not re really rising that much. Yeah, you get like an indexation, but like, you're not getting like the 10% or so up you know they want a way out but like looking at crypto they're just th thinking like it's too tough like how do i get going like wh how to earn money like you know I, I, it's just safer to like throw in a bank and leave it than start meddling in crypto like even more so nfts like i buy an nft for investment even like if it's a cheap one like where do i put it like you know it, it's, it's people are completely confused so what do you think are kind of the easy ways to you know, on board those kind of users in an easy way. So, yeah, you know, I'm coming from tech and, and science and things like that, but in the end, UX beats everything. Okay, that's something you learn. <laughs> uh, like, if you have a product with two clicks and another product with one click, then one click will win. And if it has zero clicks, like, you know, TikTok or something that you just open it and start playing, you can't beat that. Okay, so 
we, you know, I'm, I'm not a UX person, but the UX in crypto is still shit. Uh, especially if you think about keys management and things like that, uh, security. Um, but you know, we're working on that. You know, we have uh, account abstraction uh, that has had a, a very long, uh, uh, come very long way. Uh, you have here in Israel is working on that. We have a team in Israel working on that with the Ethereum Foundation. I think these things like really matter, and uh, we're working on you know like no see safe kind of thing. Uh, excuse me, it's not mostly safe anymore, it's just safe. And uh, they're really touchy about that. So uh, safe is really helping. And, and I think uh, if once you can bring the UX and security and uh, really to the average Joe, as they say, then we, we, can, we can push it. But like, for example, the UX of making a transaction through a bank. Right, I understand like with bits, it's quite easy. Okay, you just put in the number, it's fine. But like if you do a transaction overseas, you have to go through so many channels. You even have to do your signature. It's ridiculous. I agree. But then like crypto, you just put in a weird looking number and off, off a ghost kind of thing. No, so you see that people that, are, that need to do like a lot of you know, international, international transactions, they would very much adopt USDC very quickly, for example, right? Uh, but again, the average person just uses their credit card in, in a, you know, in, 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 a, in a country like Israel, you know, or a Western country, like, but, the, uh, or, uh, but, but uh, in developing countries, you do see, uh, like, crypto being more of, like, a day-to-day -day thing. Um, but definitely here, like, the, the, the UX still of paying with Google Pay or something is by far superior to paying with crypto, right? And, and, and you know, that people are working to change that, right? We have, a, in like, Lightning on Bitcoin and uh, other L2s on, on Ethereum. So well, we're on that, right? We, we, we know what the problems are. We've known them for a long time, but it still takes time to, to solve them. So do you think, like, payments is the way to go um, in general? Like, we saw the charts of, like, the companies that are they're kicking off in Israel, for example. It's mostly investment in payments, if I got that correctly. I know I'm a bit blind, but I think I saw that. But, like... So do you think that that's the way to go in terms of like not offering like, like DeFi in the traditional sense, like loans and you know, things like that, but literally payments, the, the easy things? Or do you think? Actually, in, yeah. in, in countries like ours, it would be very hard to beat you know, the payments. Mm -hmm. The UX, there, again, it's zero clicks. There, there are, yeah. like, there's so much you can go, right? If you pay with Google Pay, it is actually very, very easy. Okay. So, but I do think on other like innovative like financial stuff, you can actually um, you know beat the the the, the TradFi system very easily. You know, everyone that has dealt with TradFi more than just like the the average bank account knows that it's broken and that it's shit and that it, like completely. If you buy like we of course we in in back we're doing securities, so we have to buy securities, right? Uh, the underlines, it takes two days, right? T plus two. <laughs> uh, it's actually, f like, if you see, most of it is done over the phone, <laughs> and uh, thank God we're not doing that, but, but much of the trade is done over the phone, and it's all, like, 80s technology, okay? It's really stuck. Uh, I, like, I don't mean, uh, any, any, like, a tech person that ever tried to work with, the, like, fix API, it's shit, okay? So... Uh, the, 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 the banking and TradFi uh, uh, system is broken, okay? It's not hard to beat it, okay? And, and we saw, for example, on the last collapse also, for example, you, you spoke about, like, lending, okay? You saw players like Genesis actually repaying their loans on Aave and Compound and others, right? While, like, defaulting on their, like, TradFi loans. So I do think there is a lot of innovation that crypto can offer, and and you know well, you we, you know the the title is like uh, success and fuck ups. We, I think we 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 saw a lot of success in DeFi in the last wave, especially in in the decline. Right, we saw things that actually held uh, in very rough times, uh, and lending protocols are one of them. So I think we can definitely offer some innovation. Yeah, and in terms of what you mentioned, securities and like tokenization, which is like close to your heart, obviously, like the whole premise of tokenizing assets has been around. We saw that in like real estate, for example, 
Like it's been on the rise during the last bull market. Obviously now securities, which you're part of. Like, do you think that's kind of possibly an area of huge growth, or is just like more of a, a useful tool for some individuals? Um, because the, obviously, yeah, like there's a lot of people that want to interact with both worlds, but like. What do you think, so think about that? So, you know, I think, you know, I come from physics. I have a PhD in physics, so it's, a, it's very easy to measure, like, let's say you can call it like amount of energy. Like, if you see TVL today in DeFi, right, it's like, I don't know, 50 billion, something like that. If you want to go 5 trillion, there is no other source of, like, energy or funds or whatever you want to call it, okay, outside, like, the, the securities market. There's just there's no such thing, okay. Um, and and I think tokenization will definitely help scale DeFi and scale crypto. Um, and and but there's always uh, um, you always have to know what is the next step, you know. So the first step of tokenization were stable coins, okay. I think most people don't see stable coins as real world assets, but they are, right? It's just a dollar being tokenized. And the reason for me that stable coins were the first to be tokenized because they're very liquid and they have like trivial price discovery. So if you think on that thesis, so tokenizing a building, which we saw some companies doing like reality and whatnot, I, I don't think it's, it's, it will go there, right? Everything will be tokenized, okay? Every financial asset you know in 15 years it will be tokenized. But I think the next step will probably be like the major securities that has a lot of liquidity and very good price discovery. And, and after that, we'll also see like private debt, and in the end, we'll probably also see real estate, but uh, it will take time. Yeah, last quick question, actually, also, I guess, linked in a way to, um, to securities. Like, we're getting, like, with tokenizing, like, stocks and shares, for example, we're getting into really heavily regulated territory. And, you know, I, I think about a year ago, I think, like, Platforms like Binance and others were offering that exact service, and then they just got told no, like they had to stop. So like, they were trying to adopt and innovate, and then they just got shut down completely, right? So like, in terms of like regulation versus adoption, where do you stand? Because we obviously want to bring out those cool, like sort of tokenized things and like, you know, token things and crypto things to people as fast as possible, but then. You know, if we have to roll something out and then bring it back up, that doesn't look good. Um, I, I agree. And I think you really need to, you know, push regulatory as far as you can, but never cross the line. And that's very important. Okay. Once you're, like, obviously over the line, you, like, at some point, if it grows, you know, if it stays small, no one cares. Okay. But if it grows, the, the regulators will, and, and, and you cannot escape it, like, securities are highly regulated, okay, it's the most regulated environment in the world, okay, so the, we really have to make, to, to, to find the, the right path, and we need to find, a, a, you know, jurisdictions where regulation works, like Switzerland and others that are following now, uh, but, so, so, in back, what we've tried to do is really always to stay, you know, in the clear and, and never never cross the line. Uh, it's very complicated. It's much more cumbersome, you know, like the, the guys, CM Equity and Digital Asset AG that did like the collaborations with, uh, with Binance and with FTX. They were much faster than us, although we started like together, but you know, they're, they're gone. <laughs> and so I, thi I think that that's a lesson, right? You need to, like USDC, it took a, lo a very long time to build Circle with the whole regulatory regime around it, right? And getting the OCC to approve it, it's not an easy thing. But now it works and it provides us very good infrastructure. I don't think DeFi could have got even to, to, to this point without stable coins, right? Without USDC or uh, similar. So, so I think if we do it right and we're, we're, we're very careful with respect to like pushing the, the, the line but, but not crossing it, then, then it will work. Just la last quick thing, can, can you elaborate on your kind of careful approach? What do you kind of exactly do? Because like when the lines are not clear, like it's hard to kind of, you know, it's not a video game, right? You know, you don't have a health bar. 
right, you need to kind of, well, assess where to stop. And like so, so the first thing is to find a jurisdiction where it's clear. Okay, so things like what you see in the US, like regulation by enforcement, and Gensler saying, no, it's all clear, everything is, we know everything, right? Uh, but he can't answer if ETH is a security or not. So, you know, that, that's obviously you cannot work in the states of anything close to what we're doing these days. Okay, and you see companies like Circle and others are basically building, you know, also Coinbase building now headquarters in Europe and other places just because regulatory and clarity is the best, you know, the best you can have for, for, for uh, innovation. It's better to have bad clarity than no clarity, okay? So, and, and US at the moment, and Israel also, unfortunately, uh, has very little clarity, okay? Uh, Europe, on the other hand, is actually doing not so bad on that. Again, Switzerland is leading. We have Liechtenstein also, pretty good place. Um, and, and we see Germany tried, but the legislation there is not actually not so successful. Uh, but France is also trying now. So, so you do see, so to your question, to be more concrete, you're, if you want to make sure that you're not like, crossing the line, you, st you need to start with finding jurisdiction where the line is clear. And then you need to you know, try to maneuver around this line to find uh, s some way that the business can still work without crossing the line. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, I think we're out of time.